If you're anything like me, you've been scratching off bits and pieces of your flesh waiting for the next big Dark Souls fix next month and have had nothing to scratch that itch. May I propose the idea of pouring some salt into your wounds and rubbing it in a little with a little salt and sanctuary. Salt and sanctuary will give you that familiar burn. Maybe a little too familiar despite its completely different appearance and form. In all characteristics, salt and sanctuary is a Dark Souls game and makes no effort in covering it up. Praise the s salt? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um, when you take Dark Souls' unique gameplay formula and convert it into an indie 2D game, you actually get something that plays out a lot like the old Castlevania games, and there's nothing wrong with that. While it does owe everything, even its existence, to Dark Souls in almost every regard, you've got to give the developers Ska Studios credit where it's due. Turning Dark Souls 2D is no easy task, and they were still able to pull it off pretty well. The third-person Souls series pioneered by Hidetaka Miyazaki, the president of From Software, has a very unique and fresh RPG gameplay that is challenging as much as it is addictive. The XP you use for leveling, buying, and upgrading is gained when you kill enemies and lost to the location in which you died, forcing you to make your way back to regain this XP. In other games, you contemplate quitting the game and picking it up later, but in the Souls series, quitting is not an option because you have to venture out and regain your lost XP and make up for lost progress. Once you get that XP, back, why stop there? You want to keep pushing forward to see what the next area brings. This mechanic is ingenious, but hardly a mechanic that's proprietary to From Software. So I'm more than happy to embrace when other games want to use it. There have been numerous games to try and semi-fail at this, such as Lords of the Fallen. But Salt and Sanctuary has tried and succeeded. But I owe all that to all the mechanics that they completely copied. In fact, it has taken nearly everything from Dark Souls and probably wouldn't even exist if it weren't for Dark Souls. So is it an homage or a ripoff? That's up for you to decide. As I said, it really does owe everything to Dark Souls. As such, it does have a problem nailing its own identity into the equation, making it just a 2D side-scrolling Dark Souls in every regard. Unfortunately, it does have a problem drawing the line when it comes to the gameplay aspects it's borrowing from its big brother. It does everything Dark Souls did in the gameplay with very little to add of its own besides some interesting platforming elements and a weak and unimaginative story. Now, if 2D Dark Souls isn't enough to explain the game, let's go into just what it does take from Dark Souls. Pretty much everything. Instead of souls, you gain salt. Instead of sitting at bonfires, you visit sanctuaries. Hence the name Salt and Sanctuary. You use sanctuaries and salt to level up. You have a separate money system that allows you to buy items and you lose a percentage of it every time you die. This game doesn't have online co-op yet but it allows you to read messages or see phantoms from other players online. There are secret illusionary walls and plenty of items, weapons, and armor to pick up. You get an upgradable amount of health uses and even smaller, slower recovery items, similar to life gems. You even get bags of salt, similar to the crushable souls to use at your own discretion. There's a leveling system that more so takes from Final Fantasy X, but I like it as it is a lot more clear to what it does for your character. In this sphere grid, I recommend taking time studying it and planning out how you want your character build to be before going crazy with it. It's best to spread out in all directions for more complex builds. There are random merchants, blacksmiths, and NPCs like a guide that allows you to fast travel between sanctuaries. Even one NPC that burdens you from sin. There are covenants in the game called creeds, and if your sin level is high enough, you can aggravate members of the three. In all honesty, it'd be easier to say what didn't the game copy from Dark Souls, and that would be the boss fog walls, gestures, and online co-op or PvP, which are absent from this game at the time of this review. You know, that's a giant, giant, giant shame because co-op is where the game really shines. There is a local system in place for one versus one PvP and co-op through a sellsword, and playing that through share play despite the few millisecond delay is the most fun I've had with the game. The PvP is well developed too, and now you can make the cheesy pun, are you getting salty? 
Yeah, you are. You're getting guilty, yeah. But unfortunately, parry attacks don't do damage when you're upside down, and there's other various little glitches that will either be at your advantage or disadvantage. The delay you may encounter is dependent on your connection and is easy to get adjusted to. There are some issues with the game, like two characters simultaneously parrying an enemy at the same time, causing all damage on an enemy to be negated, or jumping through levels and other minor glitches such as that. But like I said, those other little glitches are minor, and won't ruin the experience as a whole other than the issue where if you quit the game without the second player controller turned on, or not while still doing share play, you will lose all the second player's progress. That is, if you don't import their profile to your system. This happened to me and my buddy Bazookia, and he lost 50 levels of progress. If the game could detect the second player controller is not turned on and code the game accordingly, then this likely wouldn't happen. But there are many patches to come, and I'm sure the game will be a lot more polished and add new features in time. Even though the game takes almost every gameplay mechanic from Dark Souls, it does a small amount of adding gameplay that is just essential for a 2D platformer. Even though these can arguably be considered copying from other franchises, you get brands that allow you to traverse new areas, giving you very much incentive to continue exploring previously explored areas like Castlevania and still like the Souls games. There are many optional areas that you may not even see or even know about without a guide and the game map is so damn sprawling and confusing you'll take one wrong turn and wind up back to where you started. Not that that's a bad thing, feeling lost and alone in a game world is is another staple of the Dark Souls franchise. It also manages to do new and interesting things like putting actual players' characters who died in an area in the game environment being hung or with their heads on spikes. But this isn't too dissimilar to Dark Souls and seeing people who died of a curse or petrification. The game is amazingly able to replicate the adrenaline rush during difficult boss fights and parries as well as critical overkill attacks look sweet as hell with the cinematic camera and dismemberment. There is a lot of gore and it's pleasing to the eye. Since the game takes so much from Dark Souls, you can bet it is fairly difficult, especially for some boss fights. There are some bosses that are so difficult it may seem cheap and unfair, with one hit or stun lock attacks, but they are certainly beatable. Now we know that originality is the weakest link in the game, a similar problem can be tied to the storytelling aspects of the game. As such, the story is pretty flimsy and the names for the bosses and areas are pretty unimaginative, with bosses named Mad Alchemist and False Jester, and a couple areas called Village of Smiles and Castle of Storms, to name a few. And the first boss you fight is basically just Cthulhu. The Unspeakable Deep? I mean, come on! <laughs> What else is it? The item descriptions and other lore aspects are all over the place and don't seem to come together into a cohesive whole either. I can see they were going for a vague and ambiguous storytelling, but it fails if it is mostly just world building and not building on the main plotline. Once you reach the end, you will see just what they were going for in the story and it makes sense. But still. It is inspired by the story of Dark Souls. The art style is really interesting, but will take some time getting used to. There's a desaturated look and a lot of glowing and motion blur in the environments that tend to overwhelm the levels. You may find yourself running straight into enemies you didn't know were there or missing bottles with messages inside. The design of the outfits, characters, and levels is pretty awesome though. Unfortunately, you'll hear the same two songs throughout the game. One for the bosses and one for the sanctuaries. And they can really get on your nerves, as they are very mediocre and hammered into your senses. I recommend playing your own soundtrack on top of the game. Even better, the Dark Souls soundtrack. Oh yes, the nameless song. Oh, yes. It doesn't get much better than this. The button mapping for the most part is nothing like Dark Souls and you may find yourself accidentally hitting buttons you would as if you were playing Dark Souls. That just comes to show how similar Salton Sanctuary is. All in all, I'd say while the game owes its entire existence to Dark Souls, you have to consider it is no small feat on its own. A 2D Dark Souls that plays as perfectly as this is no small task. It took three years to develop and the developers definitely deserve that recognition they are getting. But as long as you recognize the extent of how much Ska Studios borrowed from From Software, and not just in the gameplay. The game plays very smoothly and has a lot of polish and love put into it, and that's really all that matters to me. When a game has heart, it really does show. The co-op is ridiculously fun. The downsides are that the music is really bland and limited for the large amount of game time you'll be putting into it. The story is weak and unimaginative. Other than that, I'd recommend this game to experienced Souls players and inexperienced Souls players alike. It could be fun to both hardcore and casual gamers, and 
you may find yourself playing it over and over and over again. But after Dark Souls 3 hits, I'm gonna be honest here, I'm not really sure if I'll ever play Salt and Sanctuary again. Oh, well, maybe months down the line if they introduce online co-op. The game released at just the perfect time, right before Dark Souls 3, which ended up being an incredible marketing decision as Souls fans such as I were quick to jump the salt bandwagon. Full of salt. This was a fungal review original, putting it simply and sillily, or better known as analytically and comedically. Please subscribe and share. Thanks for watching this review, and I apologize for the lack of content lately. I've had some computer downtime, which is never fun. I have many other works in progress being reviews and lore, so please subscribe and or become a patron to help me out in bringing you more content. I'd also like to really thank my current supporters, and even those who donated in order to perpetuate my madness. These are all amazing people. You may also watch my previous reviews if you haven't already. Thanks again, and until next time, Fungo out.